Hey guys, how's it going? And today we are going to be covering the uh, detecting blocks or if block, which lets you do things like this. Um, you can step on blocks and they have certain effects. And it also lets you do some other cool things like counting how many blocks you've broken in an area. That one is kind of the more advanced side, um, which will lead us into, you know, we have some beginner stuff and some advanced. So this is kind of a valuable tutorial for pretty much any level. Um, anyways, so let's start with the one that most people would come to this video to see, which is um, things like if you have a block, you get the speed boost. Or if you have a jump boost block, uh, that lets you go jump higher. Um, and it only activates as soon as you step on it. So, and I can put this anywhere in my world. It doesn't have to be just there. So I can just boop and I get the speed boost and boop. So it, it works for every instance. So this is really simple. It's literally one command that you need to repeat. Um, so I'll build it with you so you don't just look at something messy. So we're gonna start with execute because execute is where most good things start. So we are going to execute as everybody. So that means uh, everybody in the world is going to play this command. Okay, then at at s means everybody in the world is going to play the command and they're going to play it at themselves. That's what at s. At s is themselves and it works for players, entities, anything. So every player at a is going to play this command as themselves at themselves. So now the command is playing wherever I'm standing, exactly where I'm standing. So if I'm standing over here, then the command is playing over here. Then we do if block. Okay, so now we're going to see if there's a block and where is this block? We're going to use tildes to mean starting from where we are, so whatever coordinates we are, go down 0.35. This number is something that I find to be pretty useful um, as a value. You can figure out what your favorite is. Mine is 0.35. It's pretty accurate to when they're standing on the block. So everybody at themselves is going to see if there is a block at their coordinates that is actually only 0.35 below their coordinates. So now we're moving the command just a little bit down. Basically, 0 point, negative 0.35 moves it from their feet just barely into the block beneath. Then what block are we looking for? We are looking for light blue concrete, because that's what this thing is. And that's it. So it won't say anything because I'm not standing on light blue concrete, but when I go here, it says test passed when I do it which is good. So it's saying test passed, but now we have to do something. So we're, we want something to happen now. So we did all of our checking. We got the test passed. It's working only when I stand on the concrete. Now we want something to happen. So we do run, meaning we want something to happen. And what we want to happen is we want to give an effect. What effect we want? We want to give an effect. Who do we want to give it to? Themselves, the person playing the command who is on top of the block. And what effect do we want? We want speed. And then you can put uh, how many seconds, one second, so you could do one second so that it goes away pretty quickly, or you can do 10 seconds so they have some extra time. And the amplifier is how strong you want it, so you could make it 100 and that'd be really insane. And then hide particles, you can put true so that it doesn't put uh, little swirly things around. So then we just put this inside, uh, we give ourselves a command block, I guess if you're super beginner, and you put it in here, you change it to repeat, and you power it with redstone in some way, just like that. Uh, and when we do that, we will get insane speed. Just as long as we're on the block. Um, anyway, so that's how to do it. And then if you want to change it to jump boost, you just change from uh, light blue concrete to lime concrete. And you change the effect to jump boost. And I added these trues afterwards. So that's why you don't really tell when they have the effect. But I guess you can remove the true and it'll be more clear what effect they're getting. It just doesn't look as nice because you see all these particles in your face. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see the effects get activated. Okay, so that was uh, one of the things that we're going over, execute if block. There's also execute unless block. So you can do execute unless block. I'll go over this just because it's kind of prevalent. So this is basically, you're not looking for it, you're looking for if it's not there. So let's do that unless block negative 0.35 uh, lights, uh, let's just call it air, okay air okay so test is passed because i'm not standing on air but when i step up test failed because i am standing on air so you can do something for people that are only standing on a certain block you can uh people that aren't standing it's kind of like it's weird logic you don't really use unless for blocks for me too often i don't really use it um it just depends on the situation but if is the most useful one um next we can do 
now, so there's one other thing with this execute if blocks. There's execute if blocks, so plural. So believe it or not, you can check multiple blocks, but it's kind of convoluted exactly what it's doing because look at this, there's three coordination coordinates and there's this all in this mask. So we'll go over, go over uh, what it's doing, but let me just give you a quick demo, just like I did for that one, of uh, a use for it. So I'm in this house and uh, it's my house and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm chilling. Um, and <laughs> so for some reason, whatever creation I'm doing, I wanted to know when a player decides to break something. Now you could do a bunch of fancy scoreboards, um, which for certain situations, checking, using advancements and scoreboards to check, like, did they break a stone block? Did they break a cobblestone block? Doing all that is necessary. But for this case, this house, I know this house, it's not a random house. It's set. And um, I know it's not going to move often or change too much. So I can check when a player breaks something it, uh, just like this. Block's broken one. Okay, I'll break another block. Two. Break another. Three. Break another. Four. Break another. Five. Six. Because uh, beds actually take up two blocks. Uh, seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. And you can just see that it's, it's updating every number. So if I was doing this from a command perspective, what I could do is... Um, what I could do is I could uh, use this to basically check if somebody breaks something in a certain area and when they do then you could run commands that update the area or resave the house or whatever the hell you want to do but using this system it's very easy to have some kind of asynchronous way to check if they broke something some kind of trigger system to say hey they broke something do this as opposed to constantly doing that thing it's hard to explain exactly the use but maybe you'll find it in the future but now you know so how it works is what you do is you have a targeted area and then you can check it versus the same sized uh targeted area or so so you have um a starting location so let's go with execute if blocks so we have the starting location and then you give it the Oh, if blocks. You define the corners of this area. Then you go to the positive corner of the next area and you define the starting place. So those two corners defined the, here to here. So now it, it created a three by three saved place to compare to. And it's gonna compare that three by three saved place to this three by three place because we started the corner right here. Um, and make sure that you're using F3. So I actually picked the wrong corner. It should be this corner. Okay, anyways, so then I add, if I add the word all, it says test passed count nine. So it actually tells you whether it passed. So if, if I break this, it says test failed because they're not identical. All is going to check if they're identical. Um, so, but if it does succeed, it tells you how many blocks is in the area and that they're identical. Now, the second little trick you can pull out of this is using the masked. So masked, what it does is it ignores air. So now if I break this block, um, it will say test failed because it uh, it's using this as a test area and it's mapping it over here while uh, and it says that they're not the same. But if instead I change the original area to have air in the center, now it's not going to care about this air block and it will allow anything to be in this spot. OK, so I could put anything in that spot. So now when I mask it the copied the original location only has eight blocks that are similar to the uh, looking location so it's kind of backwards how to do this trick but basically what you can do is by making the player edit the uh, original the quote-unquote original or uh, starting location and comparing it to a copied version of the end location um, you can count how many blocks were broken in the starting location. Um, so that's kind of like the neat trick for more advanced command uh, creators. Now let's go ahead and dish out some challenges because I know you guys have been missing that. So I have decided there is going to be two challenges this week. Number one, and they will be in the description as well in a, probably a better, more clear form, is the uh, easy challenge. So the easy challenge is... Um, Let's see, the easy challenge is going to be to make it so when a player steps on, uh, no, make it so when a sheep steps on uh, black concrete, it dies. And now for the hard, 
This one is going to involve the uh, blocks, the plural one. Um, well, this one will have kind of a multi-step. So first, design a system that detects. So basically what, what I want you to do is uh, make a save system for a region. And uh, this is actually, you may think, oh, that's a stupid challenge. It's very specific. It's, it's not. It's kind of useful for, um, let's say you want to do like some kind of a server or some kind of like a, a game or something. Let's say you want to do a game where you're checking how many, uh, when they're breaking things. And you want to see, well, once they've broken X amount of blocks, broken X amount of blocks from the original, then it's... Uh, it's probably not good or something bad can happen or you can say, oh, uh, once they've broken 30% of the base, uh, blow it up. So actually, um, let me change the wording. Instead of making a save system, we'll go like one step further. So make it so when a location has 50% of the blocks broken, make it explode. And there you go. We'll just leave it with that because that's a little bit clearer what you need to do. Um, but it, it, you still have to have a saved area, then you're going to have to count how many blocks are there, then you're going to have to count how many, figure out how many blocks were actually broken, um, and then you're going to have to do uh, percentages, so you'll have to multiply that number by 100 first, and then divide the top by the bottom, and you'll get some percentage, and uh, once that is below 50%, then it will explode. Anyways, a little bit crazy stuff, uh, more on my side, uh, more about me if for some of you uh sorry that this video is kind of uh i almost broke my whole one week streak but i didn't i'm <laughs> i'm sticking strong um i started a new job this week so it's been kind of hectic and uh, i'm also working really hard on the server we are we are literally just a few little extra features before i can finally release and just cleaning things up i'm really just making it clear um what needs to be done to play like how how to play what clicking certain things will do and uh, stuff like that, just clarifications. But all the main features are already implemented and uh, everything's ready. Anyways, guys, other than that, uh, thanks for watching and sticking with me and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.